Good Talk, the home of where the talking is good. It's your boy, Cody, the other guy, Robert, here once again. Good conversation. Doing Tiny other guy table, things. big room. Doing yeah. other guy things, baby. Other guy things. <clears throat> Whatever what, those are. What are other guys things? Hey, sit here and look pretty. Just sit here and That's look the good. other guy things. The other guy, just out here uh, looking good. Ah! <laughs> You caught us in a weird mood. I feel like we say that at the intro of every every, every, every podcast. podcast is a you're weird catching mood. us when you're weird guys. You're always caught in a weird mood. But uh, man, as we're looking outside, we're shooting this in the morning, and it is uh, November fifteenth, and it's like forty eight degrees outside, and it's it raining, and it is wonderful. Yesterday, or I guess it was Sunday, it was like really cold for the first time. <clears throat> yeah, and like, but it was different. Like I was like, oh, it feels good. Yeah, like. I felt bad because I've got small kids now. And yep. So uh, I woke up and I was like, man, it's really cold in the house. I looked at the temp and it was 62 degrees in the wow. house. Wow. Because we had had the AC on from the day yeah. before. Yeah. So it was like set to like 73 or something like that. So it was cold. That in the is house. cold. 62 degrees. So I immediately really turned cold. the heat on and I cranked the fire up for a little bit just to kind of hopefully get some heat moving in the house. And but it was, it was great. I loved it. I, love I loved it. it. I woke up. I was like, yes, it's time for winter. It's truly the best time of year. Truly the best time of year. Everybody's happier. Everybody's, whether you're secular, you're focused on <laughs> Santa, and whether you're churchy, you're focused on Jesus. But Jesus. Just, they're both happy people, just one's real. Supposedly, uh, <laughs> so I didn't really know, because I've been, to, be, to tell on myself, tell. I didn't know what cuffing season was. And I didn't know. Uh, I didn't even know what cuffing was, to be honest. And there might be a more broad definition yeah, as to never, what it might it, actually it, be. It, it, give us knowledge. Well, I don't know. Uh, uh, just my brief search, because I was like, "What is this?" Because I heard someone else say it's cuffing season upon us. And I was like, "What is this?" And yeah, apparently, uh, during the colder and wintry months, is the most likely time that people will start a relationship. I still don't understand what what does cuffing mean. I don't know. At that point, I, I guess like you're cuffed together, <laughs> like you, you, you become you link up. I don't know. It's such a okay. <laughs> Again, uh, maybe there's another definition of cuffing that maybe I should know. I don't know. Maybe there's some other type of thing. But from my brief, quick Google search, that's what it says: is that cuffing season is that time of the year when like you know it's colder, the days are you know shorter. And well, so now I need context. Are, what what was that person saying to you? Were they were they wanting to get into a relationship and they were me? more optimistic because they're like, no. well, it's cuffing season. No, no, no. I think I guess I'd come across something uh, like in my Facebook feed like mentioning cuffing season, but I also knew that Michael Todd was doing like a whole series at one point called What's Cuffing You or something like that. And so I genuinely was like, oh, what is cuffing? I know he did a series called Uncuffed and what he was that? talking about, you know, like not letting things hold you down like food and i think it was i think the i remember the, that was his first the, introductory yeah i think the whole message was about gluttony or uh, not gluten gluttony gl- being gl- <laughs> yeah his whole thing was about getting rid of wheat <laughs> gluttony oh uh, that's the uh, new re- the <laughs> gluttony <laughs> dirty the centers all you gluten eaters <laughs> <laughs> gluttony uh, gluttony but it was about gluttony and being uncuffed from like sweets and sugar and i really feel uh, like I need you know he's sure gone on I a transformation this. himself interest in transformation dude he's lost a lot yeah he of looks weight. great good for him i was very like because i never would have thought he had all that to lose i guess just the way he dresses like you know yeah I don't know. yeah sure Cuffing season is the magical time of year during colder winter months when people are more compelled to start relationships. It usually runs from late fall through winter and up until the warmer days of spring and early summer. Mm. Why? Why? Why do you think uh, the cold months? (laughs) Well, I think I think because try to to be warm. (laughs) Well, no, I think there's less activities to do, so people are not as entertained as they are maybe in the spring and the summertime because they don't have the beach, they don't have amusement parks, they don't have all these outings that they're going to. And then also the holidays is a lot around like group parties, right? You got Christmas party, you got New Year's party, you got Thanksgiving. And so family and friends are getting together a lot more than maybe they All do. the nostalgia hits. And then also it's colder, so yeah. you want a cuddle buddy, you know, someone to hold hands with, somebody. And and I personally think, I think like the holidays is a very romantic season. It's like you're out there. It's just very mood setting. For me, yeah. uh, I love it. And so I think all those reasons put together – um, you know, and we talk about baby Jesus, so maybe people want babies. 
<laughs> I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> and it just kind of gets them thinking, oh, you know, man. maybe I need a baby. <laughs> so, oh, and, and but I, I, I will say this though. I hate that it's called cuffing because to me that makes it, it kind of have dirty. a negative connotation. It sounds dirty. Not only dirty, but like when you think of cuffed, I think of like handcuffed, handcuffed like you said. Yeah. And it's not, Rachel and I aren't handcuffed together. Oh, you're it's, cuffed. It's not, it's not like I'm forced <laughs> to be in that position or I did. you can't leave. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you think of cuffed, you think I think of like you did something wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'm in this relationship because I did something wrong. <laughs> you know, it, it just gives it a negative connotation. Where I think relationships are a good thing. They I are. think they're, they're a wonderful, wonderful gift from God. Not only friendships are a gift from God, but also marriage is absolutely a gift from God. And and I think you know our society, unfortunately, according to Dad, is kind of moving away from marriage and the nuclear family. And I think that that only has dire consequences to be honest with so you don't only be cuffed in the wintry months choose to be cuffed forever how about this choose to be in a relationship <laughs> forever you're not cuffed it's so bad that sounds so bad like you did something wrong therefore you're cuffed in this relationship and unfortunately i think a lot of people see it that way that's, and that's yeah, why they that that's could why. be the problem too they don't recognize the beauty of the relationship because right. i feel like that's something that as a, a young person who got married young mm -hmm. and probably uh, maybe I've expressed it before, but at the same time, like I'm glad that we stuck it out yeah. through the harder times, the times that like we really probably could have easily stepped away. But the fact that we did stick it out is, I don't know, it's wonderful. The fact that like we made that choice, yeah. you know, when a lot of people would have chosen to walk away. <clears throat> yeah. Um, but like actually growing through mm. those issues instead of like shutting down. You know, because I feel like it's so easy in today's society, like people don't want to talk about things. Yeah. Or people don't want to work through right, things. Sure. They'd rather just end it and get out. Right. But I feel like in a relationship with the person that I hope and pray that you want to spend the rest of your life with, yeah. you know, you want to work through those issues. You want to work through those things so that way you can last longer yeah. than a season. Yeah. Well, to me, it also, Brandon is a lot of what, how we perceive things, not Brandon as in the person. Like, I was like, hey, that's Brandon. Brandon. No, Brandon, like, we right now we're both wearing a Blaze apparel, gotcha. and we are branded our youth ministry through this what slogan up? and Shout stuff like that. Shout out to a Blaze youth. That's youth. our people. You're our people. Um, and so I feel like when you start branding marriage as a bad thing, mm. and not only marriage, you start branding relationships as a bad thing. You know, the old ball and chain. Ball, ball and chain. And then I think it segues into Gosh, our thinking. So bad. Like, it is so bad. It like that. And I think that segues into our thinking about all relationships. And we see this a lot, even our relationship with God. People feel like they're cuffed to God. They have to be in this relationship, mm. and they have to do this, and it becomes very works yeah. mentality. It becomes very forced. And it is, it's, I don't see it that way at all. I get to be in these relationships. Yeah. I get to be. God, out of his infinite wisdom and his infinite love, made a way for me to have a relationship with him. I get to be in this relationship with him. Rachel chose me. Mm -hmm. I get to be in this relationship. I'm not cuffed to her. It's not. And if anybody uses that phrase, and I'm not trying to... It really you know, triggered you with a cuff. I, it triggered me! <laughs> Because I think at the end of the day, you know, here we go, conspiracy rob conspiracy in the corner. Conspiracy rob! <laughs> <laughs> I know, I, words are important. Yeah. We see it all through the Bible, and I think the devil's pretty clever. He, he, does, he, he manipulates words to where it manipulates our outlook. Mm. And so when you start thinking about relationship with a husband and wife, relationship with your friends, relationship with God, and I'm cuffed to it, and then this is just me. My thinking of cuffed is just negative. Mm. The one time I was handcuffed was in Colorado and it's because I broke curfew and they put us in handcuffs and took us to the police department and made our parents come get us. I think they were just bored. But my connotation probably. Pro probably small town had nothing to do so the police officer was like, you're going to jail. I'm like, for what? I'm like, five minutes out. It's like 11.05. Uh, I'm five minutes past curfew. But they put us in handcuffs and took us to jail. My parents had to come get us from jail. And so when I think of cuffed, I think of something's wrong. Yeah, I did something wrong. Yeah, Somebody did something wrong. You know, and I think that's even what Pastor Michael Todd was saying, being cuffed yeah, yeah. to unhealthy food, yeah. that it was a negative thing, mm -hmm. right? And Gluten. so, yeah, <laughs> it's in the Bible. Uh. Uh, gluten, one of the seven deadly sins, gluten. <laughs> No, but you, so you, am I making any sense over here? Even no, if I'm not, I, I think it's great. No, I think you're right. I mean, I think, uh, you know, death is in the power, life and death is the power of the tongue. Is that right? Yep. The that's power right. of life and death is in the tongue. Yeah, it's close. Life enough. and death is in the power of the tongue. Life you and right death the first time. is in the power. <laughs> Follow your gut. Go with it. Boldness. Life and death Confidence. is in the power of the tongue. <laughs> and so, I mean, that's something that I, I've tried mm -hmm. to just in my own vernacular and the way that I vernacular. speak, try to keep it more positive, try to yep. keep it more. 
um, upbeat. Now, obviously, I, I try and like to feel like the Lord knows when you're joking and he can understand, sure. like, you know, all right, you're not really saying right that. right because I, I i i don't go ahead yeah Finish and so it's like i i know when it's time to start speaking things the right way and like i can joke and play but at yeah. the same time when it comes to like the way i view myself serious matters in the things that i like engage with yep. and i'm involved with like i don't want to speak negatively right. those things i don't want to speak bad like even if it is hard it's like okay i know we can get through this yeah like yeah, it sucks right now, but we're gonna make it out. We're yeah. gonna make it okay. Right. We're we're still good. Right. This relationship's still like perfect. Right. We're just having a bump right now. Right. So like, I don't ever speak anything negative towards my situation. Right. Or about yourself. Oh, I'm such a loser. Yeah. No. Oh gosh, I'm so stupid. I mean, that stuff has impacts on us, yeah. and we may not think it does, but it does. And words are important. Mm. We see this is we get made fun of a lot because we're called name it and claim it. But the word has a lot to do. I mean, we know in the very beginning, God shaped and formed the world with his words. Yeah. I've heard it said, you know, the world you live in, you shaped it with your words. We see Jesus cursing things. Yeah. Uh, and not only cursing things, bringing things back to life. Lazarus, what did he do? He spoke to him. Yeah. He didn't do... Well, he even said, whatever you, like, whatever you bid in earth, it'll be done as it is in heaven. And whatever you forbid in earth will be forbidden like right. it is in heaven. It's like we have that yeah. authority because of what Jesus has done for us. So yeah. basically, we have to be mindful of like what we what are we forbidding out yep. there? What are we giving access to in our life because basically he's saying like you're the gate to your own life. Yep. You're the one that's allowing these things in your garden like yep. we've talked about before. Like basically Jesus is saying like all right, you've been given authority again. Yep. Watch your garden. And how do you how do you bind and loose things? You do it with your words. Yeah. That's you know uh, bind and loose, that's the word. Yeah, whatever you bind in heaven's yeah. bound in earth, whatever you loose in heaven's loosed on earth. Well, how do you do the binding and the loosen? You do the binding and the loosen. Mm -hmm. how, how were all of us loosed from the those of us that believe in Jesus Christ and have been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light, that have escaped the law of uh, sin and death and have now been translated into the law of spirit and life? How did we make that, that translation? How did that happen? Well, Romans tells us we believed in our heart. Yep. And then we spoke yeah. with our mouth. Yeah. And so we changed eternal destinations through our confession, mm -hmm. through what we loosed and what yeah. we bound. We, we bound eternal damnation and we loosed eternal life yeah. by believing in our heart and confessing with our mouth. So yeah. your confession's really important, yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, I mean, they even say that even with jokes, there's like <clears throat> some truth in it. <laughs> right. <laughs> Which, you know, I've maybe there is. Like, there, I, there always is, I yeah, think. Yeah, I, I mean, mean like, even on. if like you were genuinely joking, maybe there's a little bit of like little truth bit. in it. But it's like, I think if you say something over yourself mm. enough, you're going to start to believe it. Sure. You know what I mean? Like, so if you do start to say like, oh man, like, I'm a really bad person. Yeah. Or we're like, wow, I'm... I can't very, ever do anything right. I can never do anything mm. right. Or like, man, I'm very depressed. Yep. I'm so yep. anxious. Yep. I'm so scared. I'm so lonely. I'm no one's so, ever going to love me. Yeah. Like, if you constantly say that over yourself, yep. you're going to start to believe it. Sure. And then, therefore, that will become your reality. Yep. And I think that that's something that once I got revelation of, like, mm. when it came to, like, me as a righteous person because of what Jesus mm. has done for me, mm -hmm. my whole outlook has changed because now it's like, yep. okay... Maybe I did do something stupid, but that doesn't change my position. That doesn't change who I am. It doesn't change who yep. I am. Yep. And Jesus said that I've been now made a masterpiece. Yep. You know, I, I am not broken anymore. Right. I am not uh, flawed yep. anymore. Now, spiritually, I've been restored back to my righteous position. Right. And so from that place, I live out of. From yep. that place, I speak out of. And I think that that is a, a, a good key to hopefully <laughs> living more victoriously. Even that revelation will help you get out of those bad places. Exactly. Because when you do make that mistake, which we don't habitually make mistakes Gosh. and we don't try to sin and we, it's not our objective, but when I do make a mistake, what pulls me out of that is the understanding I'm righteous. Yep. And since I'm righteous, I, I can get out of this. I shouldn't be behaving this way. I shouldn't be saying this. I shouldn't be doing this. And revelation of my righteousness says, okay, I've been called to better. I've been called to live higher because I'm righteous. Because now you're cuffed, Jesus. Ooh, in a good way. They're <laughs> fluffy handcuffs. Oh, gosh. Okay. <laughs> so, but, <laughs> anyways, uh, moving on. And so, uh, but that right, it, I like to think about the prodigal son. You know, mm -hmm. even though he got in his, his inheritance, which many of us have, we've received our inheritance of eternal salvation, and he floundered that inheritance. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we make mistakes and we flounder in our inheritance and we make a mistake, but he had a revelation that he was still a son. 
And he's like, if my, my father will treat the servants this way, how yeah. surely he'll treat a son the same way. And so he went back and, and I teach that in my righteousness class in Bible Institute is even though he sinned, it never stopped him from being a son. Mm -hmm. He was still a son. You're still a son or a daughter of the most high God, even if you're cuffed to something that's not healthy. Yeah. But the way you get out of that is understanding that you are righteous. The prodigal son got out of it by realizing I'm a son. Yeah. Let me go home. Like you're not actually cuffed to it if you don't want to be. Right. That's I, true. I think that's the that's part true. is maybe the devil has convinced mm. you that like, hey, you can't live without this. Yep. Yep. You can't go on without yeah, this. Yeah. And then we find ourselves saying that. And we, yeah. We're like, oh, I, I have to have this. Little. I have to be in this relationship yep. or I have to have this amount of money in order yep. to be happy. I have to do this or I have to do that. But God's like, no, you don't have to. Yeah. Because I've already prepared the way. If you walk in my way, then all these things. That's right will be added to you. And so one way we have to understand that even in the sequence of events that we talked about when it came to salvation, it started with believing first. Mm -hmm. And so if you're going to have a confession that's going to be healthy and good, it's going to be contingent on what you believe. Amen. Yeah. So if you don't believe, like Cody was just talking about, if you don't believe you're righteous, then you're never going to have a confession that supports your righteousness. Mm. So we've got to alter what we believe. We can't believe the lies that have been said about us. We can't believe the lies that the world says, oh, I'm just so depressed. Well, everyone struggles with depression. Don't let that be the norm. Mm. The world's trying to make that the norm. The world's trying to make it to where you're not normal unless you're having problems. Yeah. <laughs> and not only problems, catastrophic problems. You're not normal unless you're autistic. You're not normal unless you're depressed. You're not normal unless you have self-doubt. You're not normal. They're making all these negative things normal. And I'm not saying that we don't struggle with sure. those things, yeah. but that ought not be the norm. The normal should be you're righteous. The normal should be you're an overcomer. Mm -hmm. the, the normal should be you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. The normal should be greater is he that lives in me than he lives in the world. The normal should be I am his masterpiece. Mm -hmm. The normal should be I am the pot and he is the potter and I was made in his likeness, in his image. Therefore, I am, I can do this. Let's make that normal. Let's make what the word of God says about us normal instead of what the world says about us, right? And I think that when we start believing that, that belief will be in re reinforced with our confession. Mm -hmm. And as we do that, it's going to set the trajectory of our path. So it's good. like someone out there that's struggling with depression, depression is very real. Mm -hmm. And I'm not belittling that. But you can't talk your way out of that with a negative confession. <laughs> You're going to have to, we're going to have to change what we believe. And so we're going we're to have to believe, okay, I may be struggling with this right now, but the word of God says he doesn't leave me in this valley. He mm -hmm. leads me through yeah, this yeah, valley. Yeah. And so I'm coming out of this, just like you were just saying, mm -hmm. I'm coming out of this in Jesus name. It, in my soul, it might look bleak right now, but I'm coming out of this because he restores my soul. He restores my emotions. He is the healer of the broken heart, which is the soul, the mind, the will, and the emotions. Yeah. And start confessing that stuff and start, let's start coming out of the darkness with the light. Mm. You can't, you can't come out of the darkness if your confession is just darkness. Yeah. So we've got to believe the light. And as we believe the light, we'll confess the life and that's going to light. And that's going to pull us out of some of these that's dark the places <laughs> that the devil takes us to. Yeah. And as you were saying that, I just was like thinking like with all these things <clears> that I guess the world and society is trying to normalize as yeah. a whole. And like you're saying, it's not that we don't believe that they're out there because they are very real things, <clears> but it's like choosing to identify with these things mm. that are not of God. Yeah. And yeah. I think that that is mm. hard right now because mm. it's so loud. You know mm. what I mean? And it's so out there and it's so in your face. And so I can, I can understand as a person that is not in our position currently how it can seem overwhelming yeah. and it can seem hard when it's so loud and it's so in your face, but it's like, we have to remember that, you know, we've not been given a spirit of fear mm. out of power, love and a sound mind. And I feel like if we can recognize that it's like, we can truly block out those sounds that we can reveal the truth of God's word about mm. us. And I think that if we can get past that of identifying with those issues and identifying with what yeah. God says about yeah. us, like you said, we have to believe it first. We have sure. to believe that what God says about us is it's true. true. And yeah. then that way we can actually identify with that. Yeah. Because I think, you know, as a person that when they feel depressed and a doctor tells them they have depression, they're like, well, that checks out. That mm. makes sense. I believe that because right. I, I felt that. Right. But it's like if you will allow yourself to feel his love and to feel his embrace when he tells you that you are loved mm -hmm. and that you are provided for and that you are protected and that you are delivered. Yeah. I believe that you can start to believe those things yeah. about yourself if you just open yourself up to receive it from yep. him. No diagnosis has to be permanent. Mm. Whether it's self-diagnosed or whether it's clinically diagnosed, mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be permanent. And we're not denying the reality of it. Yeah. 
we know, I mean, we've struggled with some of these things on our own. Um, we know people that have struggled with these things. That are, we're not denying the reality of it. We're not denying the challenge of it. What we're saying is you don't have to be cuffed to it. You, yeah. don't, you don't have to stay there because, again, God in his infinite goodness and his wisdom has made a way out. And his name is Jesus. And so we need to get into the word and find out what did Jesus not only do for me, what did he say about me? Mm. What did Jesus say about the people that traveled with him? And, and what did he say about us? And what's the word of God say about us? And as we believe in that, we can, okay, the doctor may have said this. And doctors are great. Doctors are from God. God created all things for our benefit. God, doctors are good. But what we're saying is you don't have to make that diagnosis permanent. Yeah. Let the word be permanent. Let that be final. And when you make the word and what God has said about you final, it can change all these temporal things. Mm. Um, and that's what we have to do. And we've got to, sometimes as human beings, let me just uh, tell on myself, we're selfish and we love attention. And sometimes the best way to get attention is to have a problem. Mm. Because most of the time we don't give attention. Yeah. You know, it's like we, I have two boys and when one of them's not feeling well, they inevitably get more attention than the other one. <laughs> Because there's something wrong, and sure. they need my attention to fix it. They've got a fever, they've got a cough, they've got body aches, they got this, they got going that. So we'll give them more attention. We'll let them sleep in, in our bedroom, in the big bed. We'll give them popsicles. We'll, you okay, you okay, you okay? And because they've got an issue, they get more attention. And, and we as humans love attention. And sometimes to get attention, we feel like we have to have issues. Mm. And that is such a dangerous place to live because the devil will keep you in bondage so you can get attention. Oh. And we got we got all the attention we need from God. Amen. And and when you start taking his attention and that becomes enough for you, you have set yourself up to walk in freedom. Mm. Because when when you got the approval and the attention of God, then you don't need the approval and the attention of man, and you can live free. And then what's so cool about it, then the attention you get will be positive. Yeah attention. It'll be good intention. Yeah. It'll be supportive intention. It'll be, it, it'll be things that are better for your life. And so let's maybe, let's try to break some of these cycles. Yeah. Let's have an honest conversation with ourselves. And, and I've had to ask myself this, you know, uh, am I holding on to this because I want the attention mm. or can I let go of my need for attention? Therefore I can let go of my sickness, mm. whatever that may be, Wow. whether that's depression, wow. whether that's an identity complex, can I let go of my selfishness so God can really heal me? Hmm. So that way I, I'm satisfied with the attention of one and his name is God. And when I'm satisfied with the attention of one, I have just opened up my heart to be healed of everything that will trouble me and try me in this world. And I can let go of things that have held me back forever. And like I just said, then the attention from your husband will be enough. Amen. Then the attention you get from your wife will be enough because now you're complete in the attention you're getting from God. Amen. The attention you're getting from your friends will be enough because you don't need that anymore. Yeah. Now it's just an extra. Yeah. It's just a, it's just a, it's just an added bonus to life. Yeah. Right. And I think what you're saying, there's so much freedom in that because like you no longer have to work <laughs> mm. for that. You know what I mean? Yes. For, for that approval. Mm. You no longer have to act mm. a certain way or yes, do certain things to win over that approval mm. because the work that matters was what Jesus yes. did. And his work makes it to where you no longer have to strive in that way anymore because when you just walk out what he's called for you, the rest is easy. Easy. And like you're saying, the attention that you now get mm. is a reflection of what God has done. Yes. And that can give you the ultimate satisfaction. Like when, when people notice mm. you, let them be noticing you because of what God's doing in your life. Mm. You know, like, or strive to do that. You know what I mean? I know like that sounds kind of bad. It's like, just let them notice you for what God, but you know what I mean? Is like, I think. That's good. Try to live your life in such a way mm. that it's always pointing back to him. Mm. And that it's an undeniable, okay, that man, that woman, that son, that daughter, they just want to love on God. You said something there, and I want to try to unravel it. It might be confusing at, at first, but we're going to talk it out. Okay. It's like when we identify with, with things, like let's just use one, depression. I know it's very real. But when we identify, we're going to bring people in our lives that are going to feed into that. Right. And, and we want people coming into our lives because they're going to feed into the good parts of us. Mm. Not that we attract, you know what I mean? Whatever we're identifying ourselves as, that's, well, I've noticed this in ministry 
And, and I pray that y'all hear my heart. My dad's been, my mom and dad have been pastors since 1982. And I've always noticed when somebody comes and they, they wanted prayer to be delivered, maybe they had a substance abuse problem, whether it was pills, whether it was meth, whether it was alcohol, and they wanted God to deliver them. And so we prayed and we, we set them on this course. God set them on this course. But it's amazing how they always attracted people into their life that were struggling with that same thing. Yeah. And, and it wasn't only until they could change their perspective <clears throat> that that's not who I am anymore. Yeah. Then all of a sudden they start attracting a new type of people because yeah. now when people look at them, they're seeing <clears throat> something different. And, and when they see something different, everybody wants to belong to something, yeah. right? So they'll go to people where they're like, Oh, this person's got this issue. Yeah. Let me just go to them and be a part of that. Mm. And so they would pull, almost like a, uh, like we talked about black holes, a couple <laughs> the brain hole. <laughs> uh, and, and it's like that everything around its orbit gets pulled into yeah, it. Yeah. And so, and it pulls stuff. And so if your orbit is negative, you're going to be pulling this, this catastrophic force of negativity is going to pull all the negative in this mm. world towards you. Wow. So it seems. But if our orbit is positive, and it's kind of like what Jesus was talking about, you know, when we become a good tree by changing our heart, it's like all of a sudden our fruit is good, and now all we have this catastrophic force on the inside of us, which is the goodness of God, which is this relationship with God, and that pulls all the good things of this universe towards us. Mm. And so it's like in order to break this cycle, we've got we've to change our focus a little bit, and we've got to start thinking about ourselves the way the Word says. And then through that, because if, if I'm just stuck in this... <laughs> this vortex of negativity, then that's what's going to come around all mm -hmm. the time to reinforce that, yeah, yeah. Yeah. right? Um, I guarantee you if there's anybody out there and you think you're not sufficient and you're not good enough, the devil will make sure that there's always people in your life that confirm that. Mm, that's, wow. <laughs> that reinforce that. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> and, and, and lots of times, and what we started talking about is don't let your words be one of those that confirms that and reinforces yeah, that. Yeah. So start changing what you're saying immediately, yeah. but start changing what you believe because... Yeah. The devil will send people, especially on the negative side, to reinforce the negative things you believe about yourself. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I'm just not good enough. I'm not sufficient. Woo wee! You about to get an abundance of people that are going to come your way to reinforce that thought. Yeah, this is not a diagnosis, but I do feel like it needs to be said. I feel like it. Let's say you have depression. We've been talking about that. Yeah. I feel like we shouldn't say like. My name is Cody, and I have depression. It should be more of like, my name is Cody, and God is helping me get through yes. depressive thoughts. God is helping me get through depressive moments. God is helping me get through depressive seasons. And I think that that is a, a slight shift in the way that we talk mm. slash think about ourselves. Because if if you say, like, I have depression or I, I am depressed, that's saying and confessing things about yourself. And I think that if we can try to redirect that thought and use God within that sentence and what he's going to yeah. do— then you can start to believe that. Like, yeah. like what yeah, you've yeah. been saying, the focus. What was it last week? We did the lens. The, lens. <laughs> yeah, the weird hand lens. <laughs> the little hand lens. It's like we understand <laughs> that, making, that yeah. like, yeah, we are going through it, but that's not mm. who I am. Yeah. And, and I think that's what we've been trying to say this whole time is like these things that you are going through, these things that you are dealing with or these situations mm. that you're against, they're very real. Yeah. And, and they are not of God, but they are happening and we understand that they happen to you. Yeah. But God doesn't want you to live that way. Right. And I believe that when, when Jesus said that I've come to give you an abundant life, mm. that a life abundant means like to the full. Yep. And, you know, we talk about prosperity a lot, but simply prosperity just means that like you will live peaceable. Mm. You will live comfort. You will have no lack. You right. will have everything that you need. Mm. Like when Jesus said, my peace, I leave with you, that peace almost directly translates in the Greek to prosperity. So he's like, I'm giving you this sense of security. Yeah. I'm giving you this sense of yeah. hope. I'm giving you this sense yeah. of peace. I am giving you strength. I am giving you boldness. I am giving you life. I am giving you light. I'm mm. giving you all these things. Yeah. You just have to grab a hold of right. it for yourself. Right. And that was something that was so revelatory for me because Pastor Mark taught on it like, I don't know, three or four months ago. But he's like, this is my peace. I leave it with yeah. you. Yeah. And it's like, okay, well, now we've got to take the next step. God said, here it is. Right. And now we got to take it. So t simply change your perspective and grab a hold 
of what God is doing yep. for you. And that is when I believe that you will start to walk it and start to see it for yourself because now you're seeking it, you're believing it, and you're speaking it, and now you're going to walk it out. The peace can, God's peace, peace can only quiet the storm if it's greater than the storm. Mm, that's true. And so God's, but you got to believe that his peace is greater than the storm. Mm -hmm. And when you believe that, it will now quiet the storm. Mm. The storm's not greater than his peace That's because true. that would mean the storm is greater than Jesus and mm -hmm. the storm's not greater than Jesus. <clears throat> and we're not telling you to deny the disciples when they were on that boat and that, that storm came against their life to put them in harm's way and to affect their life. And they didn't, this is fine. Everything is fine. Yes. They didn't <laughs> defeat the storm by denying it. Yeah. They didn't just didn't say, Oh no, nothing here, nothing here, nothing here. No. What did they do? They went to the source that could fix it. Yeah, they said Jesus. Don't they you they care. went to the one. And so so again, we're not denying that there's stuff going on. Yeah. There you don't get through anything through denial. That just sweeps it under the rug and it's always going to come back out later and, and continue to be a plague and continue to be a negative force in our life. So we gotta we gotta be bold enough and brave enough, right? I love what Dr. Varallo said, courage is the bridge that mm -hmm. takes us from our doubt to our destiny. So we gotta be courage, we gotta have enough courage to walk across that bridge. And so be courageous to face this and say, you know what, let's, let's, let's get in there and let's deal with this. Mm. Let's deal with the, the, the bad and the ugly so we can get to the good. Let's deal with it and, and deal with it the, with the one who has the power to fix it. And, and his name is Jesus. <laughs> and that's what the disciples did. They went right to Jesus and Jesus came out and he spoke to the storm. And that's what I love about him. Even though he d turned to the disciples and he said, Eve, little faith, you know, if you believe, you can speak to the storm. But I love that he was still there for them mm -hmm. in that moment. Yeah. So he hasn't left you. Yeah. He hasn't abandoned you. You're not here on your own. He's with you. Yeah. And what he's going to say is, okay, yeah, we can get through this together. And if you need me to speak to the storm right now, I'll speak to it. But also understand you have enough boldness and you have enough on the inside of you where you can speak to the storm too. Amen. And so release the authority I've given you. Amen. And you speak to the storm. And guess what? As you speak to the storm, it's like, Jesus, myself, I'm standing here speaking to the storm yep. with you. Love it. And so you're not alone in this. We have your back. You have our back. But most importantly, God has all of our backs. <laughs> and, uh, and so we can overcome these things that the devil has specifically sent on an assignment to try to destroy us. And so you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take authority right now. Amen. In the name of Jesus, whatever has been sent on assignment to try to destroy you, to try to plague you, to try to keep you from reaching your full potential in God, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Amen. And I say from henceforth, freedom comes to you. I say there's a shift in your mentality. There's a shift in your spirit. There's a shift right now of the aura or the presence around you. And it's not power from the earth. It's not power from this. It's the power of the most high God that is working in your life, breaking those chains, working on you, working on the inside out. And I say freedom has come to you and has come to your house today in Jesus name. So just receive that peace and walk as a child, as a son or a daughter of the most high God. Dang. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Mic drop. <laughs> throw this across throw the room. <laughs> but take it and run Amen. with it you yeah. are loved you are beautiful you are wonderful uh god doesn't make any failures That's he doesn't right. make any flaw you know he you just see yourself as a child of god Amen. doesn't make any mistakes that's what i was looking for and uh and he's empowered you Amen. to live as an overcomer walk in his peace mm. his peace yep. he leaves with you take that's it with true. you all right Love you guys so much. Hope and pray that you got what you needed from the good talk today. Yeah. Because good things are happening. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> All right. We'll see you guys on the next one. <laughs> Bye. That made me think of the, have you seen that? I don't know if it's a TikTok or an Instagram with like the dog. He's like, I'm dead. I'm alive again. I'm, I'm dead. dead. I'm dead again. I'm watching TV. I'm alive. <laughs> so good.